His first day off federal probation today, discussing the book he's writing about the drug scandal in sports. And in an exclusive interview in today with KTVU, Conti also made serious accusations against a key figure in the Balco investigation. KTVU's Rita Williams has that report. It may be hard to believe that self-described Balco boss Victor Conti has more explosive secrets to reveal. But he says he does and told me today he'll tell all in a book due out in September with the working title, Balco, the straight dope on steroids. I knew they didn't have the evidence that they claimed that they had. And that's why I walked out into a sea of reporters and did this. That meant this. Victor Conti is a person that can come across to be anybody he wants to. I mean, I think most people who hear and see Victor Conti realize it's him for who he is. And that's, you know, a used car, snake oil, salesman, bullshit arts. Mark and Lance, thank you for joining me on the podcast. It's my pleasure. Great to be here. So Game of Shadows, it's over 250 pages of investigative journalism. It's detailing one of the biggest scandals in sports, which is the uncovering of rampant steroid use at the highest levels of athletics and the international web of steroid distribution run by Victor Conti of Balco. So Victor Conti was the guy running everything behind the scenes, the, the distribution of the steroids. He was the one building relationships with athletes. You guys wrote, Victor Conti is kind of a power-driven guy. He gets in there and he likes to stir the pot. Victor has always, uh, Victor was always the go-getter, uh, always one scam or another. And he was one of those guys who liked to play all angles and was good at it. Well, Victor is, he's an amazing character. <laughs> That's what I always used to laugh. Like, you know, you just can't, you just can't make him up. Like he's 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 almost too good to be true as a character to write about. He was also a musician. He played bass, um, and he tried to sort of make it as a as a bassist at various points. And mm. he even, you know, there's a point where he ends up. He's got a cousin who's in the band Tower of Power, which is a, a fairly famous Bay Area band, and um, and Victor sort of finagles his way into the band, and and these are this is a really you know, popular, long-standing band, and the next thing you know, Victor is basically trying to like overthrow the band. He's trying to become the leader, and yeah. um, this is sort of the mentality of who this guy was. And and they they promptly there's a scene in the book where they basically just kick him out of the band, and and uh, as he's as he's trying to make his move, um, but he 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 evolves into this guy. He's sort of this chameleon-like figure. Um, he revolves into this guy who. Um, gets into the the supplement business in the early days of, of that industry and um, and he creates this sort of like whole idea that he can mastermind the specifics of what supplements you need to to uh, to make your body more effective to perform at a more effective level not just high level athletes but anybody um, he spends a lot of time in the Stanford library reading about these substances and then ultimately also about steroids and and he evolves into this guy who he creates this idea that he's gonna he's gonna do this thing where he he measures the levels you have of certain vitamins and in your body and he's going to tell you what you're missing and mm. inevitably what you're missing is this product that he has made this zinc and magnesium product he's made and he says everybody needs it everybody needs more zinc and magnesium and this is the way to to survive and he builds this industry and this is his legal industry and what he does is a sort of ultimately a fairly traditional marketing move where he aligns himself with high-profile athletes who will sort of sing the praises of his product called ZMA. My name is Victor Conti and I'm the creator of the sports nutrition product ZMA. The database that we had, we were testing blood samples, were over 250 players. And what we discovered was that they had depletions or deficiencies of both zinc and magnesium. I created this formula that's a combination of zinc and magnesium and to enhance the bioavailability or absorption uh, I added some vitamin B6. This is actually uh, a picture of the the original ZMA formula. What's up everybody? Real quick I want to do a 
another bogus supplement review for you guys. And that supplement is ZMA. ZMA uh, is a test booster, which it, it claims that it increases your testosterone, yeah. which is fine and dandy, but yeah. when you look at the ingredients, if you're not, if, if you be more skeptical when you come across supplements, if you look what the ingredients are, you'll be amazed what's in this product. Yeah, this is the ingredient, zinc, magnesium, and vitamin B6. We actually took this supplement for two months. Yeah, this is the only supplement I took with a protein shake. I tested for about two months, you know, to see if I experienced any strength increases. Now, this product stated that you have deeper sleep and you're gonna have more vivid dreams, yeah. which I did have the vivid dreams. I'm not too sure if I slept better, but I did have vivid dreams. So took the product, followed by the directions, did not have any strength increases. The only uh, ingredients in this is basically vitamins and minerals, zinc, yeah. magnesium, vitamin B6. Yeah. If you're eating a, a diet in high and whole grains like brown rice, beans, peanuts, things like that, bran flakes, uh, oatmeal, those foods are just drenched in magnesium. ZMA is a supplement marketed towards athletes, gymnasts, and bodybuilders. It was developed by Victor Conti, founder of Balco Laboratories, no high-quality scientific study, has found it to have any beneficial effects on muscle building or strength. The International Society of Sports Nutrition and the Australian Institute of Sport regard it as having no clear benefits. So if ZMA has no real benefits whatsoever, then what purpose does it serve to its athletes, it seems as though snack, is a cover-up to the steroids and Victor Conti is back to his old devious ways. One would think, with Terence Crawford newfound popularity and fame he can now find a better brand to sponsor him. But what he really does to take this to the next level and why he becomes a figure in our lives is that he aligns himself with these athletes and he becomes basically their steroid dealer. He ends up being their connection to a range of substances and, and in, in return what they do for him is they market his legal product. And so basically, and sometimes they pay him. So there's a mixed bag of him getting money, of him in exchange for marketing. He's giving them a range of performance enhancing drugs. And he's cocktailing these different kinds of drugs. He's connecting with certain people who have access to them. And, um, and he's creating, in his mind, some of the greatest athletes in the world. And in fact is. You know, his, his work with you know, Tim Montgomery, for example, leads to mm. Montgomery becoming the world's fastest man. His work with Bonds clearly leads Bonds to become the home run king. Um, and it's in that context that you end up connecting with, with Victor. The one thing I'll say, and then, you know, Lance will probably have a bunch to add on Victor, but Lance always said that the biggest problem with Victor is that, you know, one of his lawyers described him as having narcissistic personality disorder. Mm. Which is, of course, the last thing you really want in a drug dealer, right? Like, if you're, yeah. you know, Lance always says, like, you don't want your drug dealer to be having narcissistic personality disorder. He's just drawing attention to himself. No, yeah, he was you... not a quiet guy. He he wanted to be celebrated for how good he was. Actually, Victor yeah. would uh, uh, go to the the great track meets in in uh, the U.S. and Europe, and he became known as the man with the little black bag. And he'd sidle up to athletes and he'd say, "You see how she's running." That's because she's yeah. working with me. You ought to work with me. A combination yeah. mad scientist, marketing guru, uh, and uh, wants all yeah. the credit. Yeah, he and they, they, with Montgomery, you know, they literally created a, a, a thing they called Project World Record. Mm. The whole thing was designed like we're going to create Tim Montgomery and turn him into a world record holder. And integral to that, of course, was the drugs. And, and, they were, I think, incredibly proud of the idea that they could tout that they had created Montgomery. Who, um, who, that was a who of, went on to win the hundred meter world record mm -hmm. while using Victor's drugs. The other thing I remember about Montgomery is he give you a window into how competitive athletes think and feel, and and the extent to which uh, 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 they want to win. He told Victor that. He'd take whatever Victor gave him. He didn't care if he dropped dead at the finish line. And and you mentioned it, it seems so obvious now to connect the dots and and looking back at all the, the documentaries and things that have been made about the steroid scandal. Well, there was tremendous audience resistance to the story we found. Uh, people just 
I mean, today, sports fans today all know about performance enhancing drugs, whether they like it, hate it, don't care about it, but it's just part of sports. You know about that. But at the time we were doing these stories, most fans, uh, and of course, even people who owned baseball teams didn't seem to know much about them. And uh, when, you, when you told them that their heroes were drug cheats, the, the initial uh, reaction was, uh, you're lying, uh, you, you're making it up. You know, they, they, uh, we, we got emails and calls at the paper, uh, Giants fans, they just couldn't accept that the home run king had done anything wrong. Later, after it was obvious that it, the stories were true, then it became, well, so what, everybody does it. But uh, that's sports for you, that's fans. Victor Conti was 100%, uh, you know, it seems like a narcissistic, complex, just seems, uh, thought he was smarter than he was. He, he seemed like that type of character where he thought everything was under control. And that seems like it ultimately led to his downfall. But at the beginning of this story, it was like this hole in sports, it, in, uh, let's go uh, stick with baseball for the example, but this hole in baseball where steroids aren't being tested for, this hole in baseball where steroids aren't being tested for, this hole in baseball where steroids aren't being tested for, it's illegal, yes, but you have proof that these drugs will help with the performance of athletes and I'm going to design undetectable steroids to give these athletes and monitor the schedule and essentially evade these testing programs. It makes you really think though, because Deontay pays more money to have extra drug, drug testing done for him and his opponent. Wow, I don't know that. I've talked to Deontay and he says he doesn't take any chances. He pays extra so that there's more random testing done for him and his opponent. And look how many guys fail. You know what I'm saying? Not everybody true. can afford. Not everybody, yeah. not, not everybody can afford to do that. Some guys don't want to do that because they're cheating. But, uh, but also, not everybody can afford to do that if they're clean to, uh, you know, afford to pay all this extra money to make sure that there's extra testing done for him and them and their opponent. But just look at Deontay. He's doing this and and and, and commend him for doing it. But he's trying to keep it clean. He's trying to keep everybody clean. But look what happens to him. It's costing him his career. I mean, he's not fighting enough. He's not fighting the big fights because even when he's getting a big fight, the opponent's still a drug test, so then he's, he's got to take a secondary opponent, and that costs him promotion. That costs him attention. That costs him everything. They want, there, there's so many pitfalls to trying to be clean in this sport. It's such a, a ridiculous thing, man. Like, you, you start to hate him more and more as you get older. I, I said years ago, the sport's full of shit. Or it's, it's full of shit. Man. It's, it's so frustrating. It's really frustrating. People just get slicker or smarter about masking what they're taking you can't not even that is the testing is so freaking weak at this point it's, there's not enough money to do it often enough you know, like i said you got to pay yourself to try to get more uh, that's wrong regular testing why should you pay because you don't they don't have the money to because drug testing costs so much money and so you know it's not even that they need to mask anything at this point it's just not enough testing done but if there's enough testing done that you will catch these people you know, like, you will catch a lot of them. And then you'll really have to be really good to, to, to not fail. You know what I'm saying? Like, like, they talk about always, like, cycling is, like, such a dirty sport. No, cycling is actually the one that makes the effort to catch everybody. So they do catch everybody. It's not dirty. It's just the one that makes the yeah, effort to catch everybody. Yeah. You know what I mean? You, do, you, you are just as, as on top of testing as, as they are in cycling. In any sport, you'll get that many failures in other sports. Well, just like baseball. When they never tested anyone, yeah. they were all taking it. Yeah, it's crazy. Yeah, it's crazy. Look at the numbers. How they drop right away when they started getting tested harder. Yeah, I heard even the NFL, you get, like, a... You get like a heads up when you're gonna get a test. What kind of bullshit is that? Do you know boxers who you think are juicing? Can you tell or no? Yeah. How can you tell? Um, stamina, um, sudden increases in, 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 in surges in power and energy, um, sudden increases in um, uh, resi punch resistance to a point. Uh, guys not getting old. Um, uh, you know, the, the, the age of fighters of continuing to fight lasting longer and longer. Um, guys who you know, have even twice as many fights as me, is not showing aging signs, it's crazy, you know. Um, so, you know, I, I think some things are obvious, some things are less obvious, you know. Last week was a bad week for boxing, Conor Ben Eubank, yeah, what did you make of all that with Conor Ben's foul test? Yeah, yeah it's a shame, you know, I, I, it's been something I've talked about for probably a decade and a half already, you know, about the problem with uh, performance and answers in, 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 uh, in the sport, but uh, as soon as you mention somebody's favorite fighter, they don't want to hear it anymore, they don't want to talk about it anymore, so, you know, the odds are, if there's a performance enhancing drugs problem in the sport, the odds are that the best fighters in the sport are doing it, you know, the, the, the performance enhancing drugs aren't a problem at the mid-tier, they're a problem at the high level, you know, 
that's why guys do the the performance enhancers is to reach those high levels so once you say things like there's a big performance enhancing drugs problem in boxing well the first place you start looking is at that elite level of the sport because obviously those mid-tier guys aren't going to be the ones doing it and beating the upper level guys right if they're not beating the upper level guys that means they're not doing it so um, you know it's a problem it's been a problem for a while and I think it has multiplied because nobody was listening when I first started clamoring about this and uh, they were actually complaining about me and now you have a big problem I think now it's it's a major problem I don't think anybody wants to correct it to tell you the truth so I don't really talk about it that much Tony Bell you said last year he feels like maybe 70 or 80 percent of the champions at the moment are all taken off or have taken some and it's certainly been exposed to something do you yeah. think it's that many that high yeah yeah I think it could even be a little more you know I, uh, I think so uh, you know people will always say oh the fighters jealous when he says that well of course you know to a degree there is a tint of jealousy because I think you see guys getting further than you because you're on PD, they're on PDs. There, there's no way you're going to get as far as a guy on PDs if you're not on PDs. So, of course, when you don't do them, it leaves you a little bit better, of course. So, um, yeah, I do think it's about 70 or 80% of the sport. I, I am in the sport, and I, I, I can see this, the changes that are more subtle and not so subtle of the last 30 years. Weight class is jumping, um, you know, energy levels, uh, oxygen levels, uh, the way fights are. It's, 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 it's a problem, but you have to want to fix it. But you don't know what's going to happen when the bell first rings you know you know you can only go through it in your mind you sat here and said i don't know if this is going to be a hard fight mm -hmm. we don't know until we get in the ring at what moment in that first round did you catch a feeling that okay i could dominate this or i see how this is going to go when it first started i already knew when it first started i already knew when it first started i already knew you knew when the bell rang i already knew <laughs> First and foremost, I know he haven't <clears throat> faced a southpaw okay. in some time now, and I think he only f faced two southpaws in his whole career. Yeah, you know, so uh, I was very confident. I trained my ass off for that fight. I want to ask in the fight, when did you start feeling sorry for the dude, man? Uh, around probably like the sixth round. Six you know rounds, you started feeling sorry, like yo. I wouldn't say feeling sorry because that, that was a the fight. I was feeling. Listen, I love boxing. I ain't never say yo stop the fight. I'd be like, yeah, get I'm, his ass kicked. But I mean, come on now. Listen, man, we ain't, you in there? I'm like, I'm like Drago. <laughs> 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 you die, you die. Yo. If there have been rumors of blood doping and widespread distribution of anabolic steroids in the Soviet Union, has Drago partaken in any such experiments? No, no, even it's naturally trained. Then how do you explain his uh, freakish strength? Like your papa, he ate his spinach every day. <laughs> Did he hit hard? What's it? What's no, it? No, no, this punch all. wasn't hard? No, no. Did he hit hard? What's it? What's no, it? No, no, this punch all. wasn't hard? No, no. Did he hit hard? In the past, you worked some yes. with Derek, and gotcha. so I'm sure you've seen Errol Spence up close. Oh yeah, yeah. Spar keep multiple, multiple rounds. Up. What would you think if he came up to middleweight for some big fights? He would. Be, I mean, he hits like a light heavyweight, and I'm not saying like a light heavyweight, like an average light heavyweight. He hits like a light heavyweight that can punch. He hits like a light heavyweight, and I'm not saying like a light heavyweight, like an average light heavyweight. He hits like a light heavyweight that can punch. He hits like a light heavyweight, and I'm not saying like a light heavyweight, like an average light heavyweight. He hits like a light heavyweight that can punch. <laughs> <laughs> so wow. No, no, really. I, 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 I said it like I, I said it like I said it. You know what I mean? In the interview, like I was expecting more. I already knew I was strong, mm -hmm. you know, physically strong. You know, I've been physically strong my whole life, even though I was skinny. But you know what I mean? When he hit me with a with a left, boom! It was like bam. And I was like, that's it. How about this? A week after that, Ugas and Spence. Oh, that's a good. That's a, I look, I'm looking forward to that fight. You spar Spence? I, I, I spar Spence. I didn't spar Ugas, but I have Spence. But it's, it's going to be a tough fight for him. How hard does Spence hit? Oh shit, he hits. He hits every five pounder. That's what everybody tell I me. He hits man. He's Very and smart fighter. And he doesn't get tired. How hard does Spence hit? Uh, he didn't hit. He didn't hit that hard. But he never caught you that clean. That was probably yeah. the best shot he landed. No, he caught me. He caught me a couple of times, but you know, I was surprised at how hard he didn't hit. Hellbrook, his trainer tried to discredit Earl and his 
opposition, saying Chris Algieri isn't a puncher, saying that Van Heerden isn't on that level. What does Adrian Broner, who's a four-time world champion, what do you think about the opposition of Kell Brook? Fucking not, don't, I got it. <laughs> Listen, fuck all that. I've been punched before by Earl. <laughs> that motherfucker punched you. <laughs> Even that everybody say, oh, he's a big puncher. He's this. I think he's just a volume puncher. I think he just wears opponents down. Just wear them down. I, I don't think, you know, he, he has a one punch knockout. He have power, but it's not like, you know, boom, sleep. Bro. You know what I mean? I think it's like, bam, oh. Boom, 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 boom. And then he just wear you down. Right. Maybe you should do a colon cleanse or something. Do you do colon cleanse? No. Do one and you're going to be amazed. Really? I swear. I don't know about that. What'd you do? What'd you take? No, I just, you know, take, uh, you know, just a little colon cleanse, uh, mm -hmm. dietary. Not like supplements or. Right. And not like supplements or. Right. And not like supplements or right, I mean, stuff like, like that like just stuff that's like fiber yeah like a meal prep I got, company a, I got a nutritionist i got okay. a, a chef all that yeah. and you're also i saw on are you a part of that snack thing too yeah yeah so that's uh what that is is uh that is that um that dude from balco yeah yeah, yeah. Victor so, Conte. Yeah. yeah so victor Conte, he was on the podcast back in the day so he's a guy that busted or he got busted yeah. for with barry bonds and yeah. the, the clear where they were giving him that undetectable steroids mm -hmm. and now he's on the other side of it he's yeah. making sure that the whole sport is clean yeah and nobody knows better than him because he cheated for years yes yeah. and they and they hate it <laughs> they hate it because yeah. you see a lot of people like oh man this dude was a cheater this dude was this this <clears throat> dude was that and then you know you can't get nothing past them well he was a cheater but you know, just because a guy was a cheat, look, first of all, that's the kind of guy you would want yeah. being involved in cheating. Well, that's the kind of guy you would want yeah. being involved in cheating. Well, that's the kind of guy you would want yeah. being involved in cheating. And yeah. ch catching cheating. But he's trying to clean up the whole sport. Yeah. Somewhere in the third, it seemed like you picked up the intensity. Is that when you felt like you started to get to him? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I felt like I was, I was in control the whole fight, you know, um... The first round, neither one of us really did anything. We was kind of just filling each other out. The second round, he kind of started picking it up a little bit. And um, I, I caught him with them two shots. I feel like that's what led me to get more control because I, I felt as if I, I caught him off guard. He wasn't expecting me to punch as hard as I did. So I could see on his face, he was kind of like, oh, 